I'm Roy Son. Welcome to the School of Violin Artistry. In this video, we're going to study the Concerto in A minor by Vivaldi. We're going to explore how you can bring this piece to life, how to give it excitement and personality, and how you can make your performance something very special. In short, we're talking about playing this concerto with violin artistry. Let's start with bow strokes. There are lots of possibilities. Here's bow stroke number one. You might call this a slightly separated detaché. There's a little bit of a release of the bow pressure between the notes. But the sound doesn't stop because there's a lot of resonance between the notes. Bow stroke number two. is a martelet bow stroke where we grab the string for every note. That has a very different sound and a different feeling. Pa, 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 pa. It's kind of elegant. Here's bow stroke number three, a smooth detaché bow stroke. That's kind of bland and unattractive. However, if we add vibrato to it, it becomes very expressive and soloistic. Here's one more bow stroke, number four. It's an accented version of number three, an accented detaché. We need this for the phrase endings. By the way, for the moment, we're just concerned with the eighth notes. In a couple of minutes, we'll talk about the sixteenth notes. So, now we have four different bow strokes. Which one do you like the best? And which one do you use in your playing? Of course, there's no right answer. Vivaldi didn't tell us what kind of bowing to use. In fact, he didn't give us much information at all, other than the basic notes. Take a look at this page from the original score. No dots, no dashes, no accents. No dynamics. Just like all composers from that time, Vivaldi expected every violinist to shape the music in his or her own way. Now, let's combine these bow strokes with different dynamic levels. Here's a little routine that I use. I'm going to establish each different stroke on an open string and then continue up the scale. Let's start with bow stroke number one, the slightly separated detaché. I'm going to play it at two different levels, first piano and then forte. about three different levels. We need to find the right combination of ingredients for each different sound. For the soft sound, I'm using about one inch of bow and a very light bow pressure. For the medium level, I'm using three or four inches of bow and a little more bow pressure. And for the forte, I'm using about ten inches of bow and even more bow pressure. Are you able to achieve three distinct levels of tone with good quality? How many different levels can you find? Can you manage four or five? When we go through this same process with bow strokes number two, three, and four, we start making some very valuable discoveries. For example, bow stroke number two works very well when it's soft. But when we try to play it too loud, it becomes rather ugly. With bow stroke number three, we have the most flexibility, from very soft to very loud. When you start 
practicing this way, you take ownership of these bow strokes and of the different dynamic levels, and you add them all to your toolkit, right at the top of the box, ready to pull out and use at any moment. So, let's start plugging these bow strokes into the Vivaldi Concerto. Let's start with bow stroke number one, the slightly separated detache. This is probably the one I use the most. This gives the whole movement its basic feeling, kind of happy and bouncy. So it goes along that way for a while. Now we're into a sequence. What is a sequence? It's the same note pattern, repeated over and over. Each time it's one note lower in the scale, or one note higher in the scale. In this case, the music is going down the scale, so we make a diminuendo. Each group is a little softer than the next. The first one is forte. Softer, and softer, and softer. Can you get four different levels? That's worth practicing. Now, we've reached the bottom of the hill, and we start climbing, softly, and louder, and louder. starting softly, and a little louder, and still louder. Now we're coming to the end of the section. Let's make it feel like an ending. Maybe this way. So I've changed over to bow stroke number four. The notes are longer and louder, and they're accented. That way it feels like an ending, without having to slow down. But if I should happen to slow down a little, then I need to come right back to the original tempo in the next section. So, we've arrived at measure 13, and we've come back to the first theme. We've heard this one before. Maybe it's getting a little boring. Perhaps it's time to do something different. How about bow stroke number two? Here comes something new. The music has a whole different feel now, but we have to make that happen. How about bow stroke number three? That's the most expressive one. And again we end the phrase with a few notes of bow stroke number four. to number three, and number four, and again number three. This time it's even more intensely singing. In the next video segment, we'll talk about phrasing. But before you go on, please get your violin out and start trying out what we've covered so far. And please leave a comment or a question. Then we'll continue on in the next video.